So what's the Mila DK300 Max dual motor e-bike? That's coming right up. Hey guys, it's Rick from Run Playback. Today we're diving into the world of dual motor e-bikes with a review of the Mila DK300 Max, a moped style fat tire e-bike, which is a major upgrade compared to the original Mila we reviewed. It's definitely got some cool features and we'll break them down for you, but there are a few things you might want to consider as well. So let's get to it. First off, the design is pretty unique with the triangular frame, dual batteries, dual motors, fat tires, and moped style vibes. It's clear the DK300 is built for long distance adventures. Those 20 by 4 inch all-terrain fat tires are typical for this style of e-bike and are fine for when you're on the road or off the beaten path. Now here's where it gets interesting. The DK300 can zip along at over 30 miles per hour thanks to its dual 750 watt rated 1200 watt peak hub motors. That's a total of 2400 watts of power Power, making it a beast in the acceleration and climbing department. Plus, it comes with two removable 48 volt 20 amp hour batteries, promising a range of up to 150 miles, which might be doable if you're traveling at the lowest speed possible with tons of pedaling. But in reality, things like your weight, the terrain, and how much pedal assist you're using are the main factors on range. Here we go. Today we're checking out the Milad DK300 Max electric moped. So as you can see, this is very similar to this class of moped, Super 73, Aerial Rider, Juiced. But if you watched our previous video with the original Milad, it's the same exact frame almost with a few different noticeable features. What I like best about this style of frame is that the rear wheel is planted a little bit further out. The swing arm is a little bit further out than maybe Super 73 and the rest of those brands, which makes it a little bit more stable when riding, in my opinion. This style of triangular frame is just really nice. And they filled it with all the things that I would actually do if I were to upgrade the original Mila. 20 by four inch tires. These are all-terrain tires. We got an integrated front fender over here, integrated headlight. This is a 48 volt headlight, so it is receiving 48 volts directly into it. It's really nice construction. These things are usually made out of plastic. They feel pretty cheap, but uh, this particular headlight from Milad is actually really, really nice. Front suspension fork with a compression knob, as well as a preload adjustment. And you'll notice that we have kind of like a riser handlebar. So you can attach your own handlebars if you want to change that out. You'll notice over here, the stem is actually kind of high, which is why all these spacers are over here. But yeah, plenty of opportunities to raise or lower your handlebar depending on how you like to ride. Now, we got these rubber hand grips over here. We got a half twist throttle. This switch is interesting. On first glance, it looks like signal switches, but it's actually for the low beam, normal beam, and high beam for the headlight. And then here you have the electronic horn that sounds not like a horn. <laughs> Sounds like a beep. We got the seven speed Shimano transmission system. We also have these Milad hydraulic brakes. On the left side is the color display. So when you first turn on the bike, it'll ask you to create a password. Now you may find that annoying, but it's actually a good security feature. So if you hold down the plus button, that's what turns on the headlight. You have the low beam and then high beam. Switching these, between low and high is really helpful when you're riding in the streets and either you wanna see the ground or you want a vehicle to see you. Dual batteries. So both of these batteries are 48 volt, 20 amp hour, and obviously you have the faux gas tank design up top, and then on the bottom is sort of the standard shark style. And these batteries are both feeding power into the controller. And just in terms of the center of gravity, it's really stable to have you know one battery on top here and one over here. So the batteries are removable, you got the keys over here. You also have these indicators to see your power level. For this battery, the power button is on the other side. And for the bottom battery, the power button is over here. And the charger that it comes with actually has a splitter. So you can actually charge both of these batteries at the same time. Now here is a very comfortable moped style seat. You've probably seen this before. It looks very similar to the original Milad. In the description, it says this has memory foam. Another big feature for this bike is not only do you have front suspension, but you also have rear suspension. And this is a pretty robust rear suspension spring. So you can not adjust the preload probably with this dial over here. You have a, a wrench. So you do have an integrated taillight over here. 
However, it doesn't light up, it doesn't flash or get brighter when you hold down the levers, the brake levers. Here's a closer look at the seven-speed Shimano transmission system. Here's a closer look at the hydraulic disc brakes. Now it does say it is four piston. Now I did mention that it's dual motor. These two motors are 750 watt rated 1200 watt peak for a total of 2400 watts. So the total weight of this bike is 138 pounds. Pretty heavy. It pretty much weighs as much as me, so I'm struggling right now. Um, not something that you would want to carry up a flight of stairs if you live in an apartment walk up. So it might be a little bit hard to see, but this is probably the best feature of this bike, which is uh, obviously the five levels of pedal assist. But you also have three different power modes. Right now it's on rear wheel drive. Press the button, front wheel drive, press the button again, all wheel drive. Now you could do that while you're riding. You could change where the power is coming from, whether it's the rear, front, or all of the wheels. And that's something that's really unique. That's something I've never tried before. All right, let's take the Mila DK300 Max for its first ride. So as you guys know, I'm on the shorter end, but this bike is actually not bad for someone my height. I can't exactly flat foot it, but I can get a a foot down, I can kind of go on my tippy toes like that. So I think if you're like over 5'7", this is probably the right bike for you. You could flat foot it easily. So we'll turn on the bike, put in the password, and we'll start at pedal assist level three, and we'll do rear wheel drive first. Okay, so the low end torque on pedal assist level three, rear wheel drive, Feels really good. The ramp up feels slow, really easy to control, but it does kick in as you get going. I think the pedal assist is really, really sensitive. So just some things to think about when you're riding this thing. This is probably the kind of mode that you'll be in the most, uh, especially if you're kind of going through traffic, you're not going too fast. You don't need a lot of power. Rear wheel drive is probably the one you want to use. And again, pedal assist level three. It's uh, it's pretty quick, it's pretty quick. Let's bump it up to pedal assist level five. Yep, much faster. Definitely plenty of torque. Hard to feel the top end in this little area, but this could definitely hit uh, some top speeds of over 30 miles per hour. All right, let's try front wheel drive. This is front wheel drive, pedal assist level five. So not as fast. It doesn't uh, kind of push you the way rear wheel drive does. So the feeling of it is that it's pulling you, right? Uh, so speed is a little bit limited, but you definitely get more grip uh, considering maybe my weight is more up here in the front. So you get that pull. Maybe if you're going up a hill or something like that, um, you'd want to kick it into front wheel drive. Let's try dual motor, all wheel drive. And there you go, <laughs> plenty of power. That thing just, just rips really easily. And this is probably the mode that's the most fun. But if you're not ready for it, it'll definitely throw you off. Easy to stand up on. on the grass, suspension is handling quite well. Plenty of stopping power, you have four piston hydraulic disc brakes. But uh, you know, if you're, if you're at a stop <laughs> and you have it on uh, dual motor mode, uh, this is what it looks like. You know, it just kind of kind of pushes you forward pretty abruptly. So you got to be ready for it. The the pedal assist is really sensitive. So I think 
I think it kicks in with just the slightest input. If you see, just a little bit of... Now that, that, that can be very strange, especially if you're trying to commute or something and you're not ready for it. That little, that little pedaling just pushes you forward. To avoid that abruptness, I think you'd want to kind of have maybe a finger on the brake to disable that a little bit. And then, uh, and then just kind of throttle into, into it, like so. Such a big upgrade from the original Milad. You get so many features for this price point compared to the bigger brands, which, you know, obviously have a good reputation. But I think uh, companies like Milad are actually delivering pretty good parts at a competitive price and things that you can probably replace easily with parts on Amazon. This is a very powerful, very powerful bike for the price. So for our range test, we traveled a total of 30.74 miles at an average speed of 15.5 miles per hour with a few speed bursts of about 33.6 miles per hour. By the end of our trip, we ended up with about 50% battery life left. So based on our calculations and how we like to ride, we'd get about 60 miles of range before having to recharge. Now when it comes to comfort, the DK300 has a moped style seat decked out in memory foam. You'll also appreciate the front hydraulic suspension fork and the very decent rear shock, which helps to smooth out those bumpy rides. And since the swing arm is located a little further back than other fat bikes in this class, it has a surprising amount of stability on the road. Now this is all good until you need to move the Mila DK300. At 138 pounds, this e-bike isn't the lightest out there, which might make it a bit tricky to transport and maneuver. So keep that in mind if you gotta deal with stairs or racks. Safety-wise, you're in good hands with four piston hydraulic disc brakes on both wheels while you're cruising at higher speeds. Plus the integrated 48 volt headlight with high and low beams, along with the taillight, keep you visible in low light conditions. And keeping tabs on your ride is easy with the left mounted color LCD display. It shows you important stuff like your battery life, current speed, and how far you've gone. So final thoughts. The Mila DK300 Max is a pretty solid deal for the price, especially when compared to other moped style fat tire e-bikes with similar specs. Dual batteries and motors definitely aren't cheap. It's also a solid choice for those who crave long distance adventures, and it's got the power to ride with traffic. But on the flip side, it's not the most portable bike out there due to its weight, and you might get some funny looks riding it in the bike lanes. But whether the the Mila DK300 is the one for you really depends on how you plan to use it and what you value most in a class 3 moped style e-bike. If you want to dive into more EV tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.